Hello everyone and welcome to Split Second. My name is Cicada and I will be taking you through today's match. Before starting, we at Split Second want to thank everyone for your constant support and suggestions on all social media. You can continue to support us by sharing and liking this video, subscribing if you haven't yet, or by becoming a patron. To celebrate reaching 4,000 subscribers, we will be randomly giving away a Watchtower 100. To win, all you have to do is pledge as a patron of any tier until the end of July. This box was graciously sponsored by our awesome LGS, Arena Porto. Finally, after a long time coming, we're once again together, playing live and showing you our brand new playmat. Now it's time to get into the fun. This week we're playing our monthly special featuring Silver Border Commanders. We also have a special guest this week. She's a Portuguese MTG streamer with over a thousand followers and a great person to hang out with, Filipa Carola. Our commanders are me with an adaptation of Demented Kirby's Pipa, Filipa try my list for a combo slash one shot Baron Von Count, David with his teamy beaters, and Baal is playing a Planeswalker centric Urza. Let's look into our starting hands. Baal is the one starting this week. He has Mulligan once and chose to keep his second hand. It's on the slow side, but at the same time it has a Magus of the Moat, which is a good tool to stop me and David from punching everyone out of the table. He has a Mox Diamond for ramp, and also a Jace and Raveler of Secrets for card advantage. His lands are Morphic Pool, Watery Grave, Urborg Tomb of Yawgmoth, and a Steam Vance. My hand seems pretty nice. I have Breeding Pool and a Forest as lands, covering my colors. Mana Vault and Felwar Stone can easily assure Peep enters the battlefield on turn 2 while potentially ramping me up into an early Primal Vigor or an overloaded Cyclonic Rift. Song of the Dryad is a good way to keep the Baron or another annoying permanent in check. Philippa Mulligan once and kept a hand focused on card advantage. Phyrexian Reclamation, Might Blade Render and Stolen Strategy. She has Goldraz Assassin which can control our board while also being used to get all those sweet numbers for Baron Von Count. Her lands can tax her life total quite a bit thanks to Ancient Tomb, City of Brass and Verdant Catacombs. David's hand is a bit slow. He has two forests and a Nyctos for lands. Finale of Devastation could be used to find him ramp, but that's not really what you want to do for your turn 3. Tender Shoot Dryad can quickly fill his board and Terastodon is good if he's able to flash it in with Timmy. Let's get this show going. Bal opens the hostilities with a windswept heath he just drew, following it up with a Mox Diamond. He discards a Watery Grave and passes to me, ramped up and ready. I also play the land I just drew, an Ancient Tomb. Then I cast a Felwar Stone and I wanted to keep going but the stone actually produces no mana at the moment, so I'm forced to pass to Philippa. Philippa plays a City of Brass and passes to David, going slower. David mimics Philippa with the basic forest. On his end step, Bal cracks the fetch for a Rogrim Triome, making me want to tap the Felwar Stone just to show I can. Bal plays a tap Steam Vance. He is slowing his game plan down for a bit and sparing himself some damage before passing to me. On my turn, I start by casting my commander, Pipa. I follow it up with a basic forest and tap it to cast the mana vault that I intended to cast last turn. Ready to get my engine going, I pass to Philippa. Philippa plays a Verdant Catacombs and cracks it for a Badlands. She casts a Mindblade Render, ready to start fueling her hand and looking towards one-shotting someone with Baron Von Count. She passes to David. David is in a bad spot. He plays a forest and passes, having a really slow start while two other players are already moving ahead with their game plan. Bal considers playing his Urborg, but he sees me hitting myself with the Ancient Tomb, so instead he gets his Morphic pullout. He then casts Magus of the Moat, cutting me off of my aggro plan while stopping Philippa from drawing cards. Taking the fun from us, he passes to me. I originally intended to Song of the Dryads the Magus, but I draw a Seedborn Muse, so I go ahead and cast that. This gets the table somewhat worried. I then play a tap breeding pool and pass, unable to attack. For now. I untap with Philippa. She then plays a basic swamp and casts Baron Von Count. She doesn't really need to attack us in order to take us out anyway. She goes to her end step and I activate Pipa, getting myself a 6-6. Not a bad start. David plays a Nykthos, passing once again. We're not sure what happened, but I roll the dice at the end of his turn once more. Pipa gets me a second 6-6. The rest of the table isn't super happy about this, although now they're glad that Pal actually has a Magus. Bal does play his Urborg this time around and goes to cast his first Planeswalker, a Jace Unraveler of Secrets. He scries to the top, drawing the card he just saw. Then, Bal moves to his end step and I create a 4-4 dice token. 
My dice army is on a roll. I start my turn by being a good guy and ramping Ball up with the Song of the Dryads on his Magas of the Moat. Now, creatures are finally free to attack. I go to combat, attacking the Jace with a 6-6 and then sending 6 damage towards Ball and 6 towards the Vid, the latter just so he feels pressure to start moving his ass. Damage resolves and the Walker is beat out of the table. I move to my end step and I choose to skip casting Primal Vigor for now, mostly to try and check how much of a threat Philippa perceives me to be. Instead, I roll for Pippa once again, getting a feeble 1-1 onto the battlefield. Philippa untaps and moves to combat first. She attacks Baal with the Mindblade Render and the Vid with the Baron, more interested in drawing that card from the Render than actually taking someone out through combat. On her second main phase, she plays an Ancient Tomb and spends a bit counting her numbers to check if there's a chance she can one-shot someone this turn. We're all kinda terrified, but Philippa concludes she is missing some mana. Instead, she casts Stolen Strategy and moves to her end step. I roll for Pippa, getting a second 4-4 token. David plays another Forest and now he casts Timmy. We're not super thrilled about Timmy being on the battlefield, but it still needs to survive a turn cycle. David goes to his end step and Pippa once again gets rolled, this time for my third 6-6 token. The table complains about my high rolls but otherwise moves to Baal's turn, hoping for a Wrath. Baal draws for turn and casts a Silent Arbiter, once again trying to stop me from going the full aggro route. So rude. Still, I roll for Pippa to see if I'm able to get myself a big ol' bit stick. I just roll a 2. I hint at being able to one-shot someone soon, despite the Arbiter, and the table gets really concerned. I'm super lucky with my top deck, an Oko. I first cast a Primal Vigor to try and check for potential counter magic, and then cast a Planeswalker. Once again, I gift Ball with something, this time being a 3-3 Elk. I decide to push David into a corner by swinging at him with my entire board. He is forced to block a 6-6, but he's still really low. Just 4 life remaining, which is exactly how much damage Philippa has on her side of the table. I pass the turn, my army looming ever more threatening. We untap, and Philippa's stolen strategy is super unlucky, exiling a land from each player. This includes a tabernacle at Pendrel Vale from Baal, which could have staunched my ever-growing army. Not super happy about her position, Philippa still chooses to eliminate one player by taking David out with her attack. What a ruthless guest. She draws a card from the Mindblade Render. Then, she plays a basic mountain and once again starts counting. Unfortunately, at this point, Baal and I have revealed that we have a Cyclonic Rift, which means that Philippa needs to move slower than she'd like to, focusing on the threats at hand first. Philippa pays 4 life and casts a Dismember on my Muse, slowing down the board growth. The Baron's counter moves to 4. She then uses the Urborg to let the Mountain provide black mana, evoking Shriek Maw. The Baron triggers again and goes down to 3. Then, the Shriek Maw enters the battlefield and Philippa decides to kill one of my 6-6 tokens. She then casts Goldra's Assassin and the Baron moves to 2. Philippa passes to Baal, hoping to make a killing strike next turn. On her end step, I activate Pippa and create two 1-1 tokens because of Primal Vigor's replacement effect. I'm still hoping to take Philippa out on my next combat. I don't mind Baal overloading his rift if he does find the mana for it. Baal does not find the mana he's missing. Instead, he finds an innocent Academy Rector which he casts. I wind back to his comments on how his deck is supposed to be anti-creatures and realize this means he probably has a humility in his library. Baal passes to me. On my turn, I wonder about using Oko's ultimate to swing for lethal on Philippa, but I'm still missing damage, especially if Baal decides to rift one of my tokens. So, I do the sensible thing and give Baal with a second elk, formerly known as Academy Rector. I go to combat and attack Philippa only with my 6-6 and 4-4 tokens. She blocks one of the big ones with the assassin. I cast a Findorn Elves before passing to her, having enough mana to overload the rift. Philippa untaps and the stolen strategy triggers, once again exiling only lands. What are the odds? Baal also despairs a bit because he wanted that mana to overload his rift. Philippa casts a Phyrexian Reclamation triggering her Baron. I respond to the trigger with an overloaded rift because otherwise I was basically going to die this turn. The board gets cleared and Baal loses an additional mana bouncing his mocks, putting him further behind on his protection from my board. The Reclamation hits the battlefield and our guest follows it up with an untapped Smoldering Marsh, the Baron and the Mindblade Render. She passes to Baal, hoping that he makes himself a target over her. On his turn, Baal tries to cast the Fires of Invention. 
This could really make him annoying with the ability to cast multiple spells in a single turn, so I counter it with a Force of Negation, exiling the last card on my hand, an Intruder Alarm. Bal shrugs, now fully aware that Philippa's fate is sealed. On my upkeep, we miss the fact that the Mana Vault should not have been untapped. This, however, does not affect the game's outcome, as you'll see. I activate Pipa on my main phase, tapping the Felwar Stone for it. I get two 3-3 dice tokens. Then, I ultimate the Oko, giving the Felwar Stone to Philippa, who was feeling neglected from my gifts, and getting the Baron in return for my troubles. I then swing for lethal. Philippa takes down one of my 1-1 tokens with her Mind Blade render before getting taken out. Bal and David point out that I am, once again, killing our guest, but it had to be done. The Felwar Stone is returned to me, and I pass to Bal. Bal still has some tools to keeping himself alive, and maybe finding a way to purge my board. He plays a City of Brass, not discarding it for the Mox Diamond just in case I have another way to disrupt that bit of ramp. He thinks on his options. Between the Silent Arbiter and the Academy Rector, he chooses to cast the Arbiter just in case he finds a way to kill his own Rector and get to Humility. Bal passes to me. On my turn, I re alk the Arbiter. I move to combat and attack Bal with everything but Pipa and the Findorn Helves. Bal jump blocks a 6-6 and takes a heavy beating. We move to his turn, with Bal hoping for that missing one mana. He does not find it. Instead, Bal finds a Knight of Souls Betrayal, which he casts, wiping off my 1-1 tokens and my Findorn Helves. He wishes he had found his enchantment one turn earlier, but it wasn't meant to be. On his end step, Pipa produces two 2-2 two -two dice tokens. I untap and move to combat. At the beginning of my combat step, Bal Cyclonic rifts my Song of the Dryads, recovering his Magas of the moat and preventing me from attacking this turn. On my second main phase, I elk the Magas, preferring to save the Song of the Dryads in case Bal does find that humility or something equally annoying. I then cast a Kiora, Master of the Depths. Now, at this point, I do use the Vault, which should be tapped to activate Pipa. However, ironically, she produces two 1-1 tokens which die immediately to Knight of Souls Betrayal, thus not affecting the game's outcome. I use Kiara to untap a land and Pipa and cast a Talisman of Curiosity. I pass to Bal. We're at the ending stretch here. Bal does not find a Wrath, so he decides to cast Urza and use his minus one comes out with a reveal the top 5 cards of your library, you may put all creature cards and or land cards into your hand. Put the rest into your graveyard. Bal doesn't find any creatures, but he does find a bunch of lands. He plays his Mox Diamond, discarding a Badlands, followed by playing a Serra Sanctum, and then he concedes to me, having no way to defend himself from the rolling army. Bal gets diced. This was a great game, and the Mented Kirby's dice army performed really well. However, we wanted to show you guys more, so we decided to shuffle up and get a second game going. We roll the dice and this time around, David is the one starting. His hand is still potentially slow, but with a high teamy payoff. He has two forests and a sylvan library to draw him a bunch of cards. Fierce Empath can help him search for another beat stick or just a good tool for interaction like Terastodon or Kogla. Hydro Omnivore is a large beat stick that synergizes well with Crater Roof Behemoth. Blightsteel Colossus is a one-shot machine. Bal's hand could be slow, but he has the potential of creature hate. He has no ramp, with Command Tower and a Hallow Fountain as his lands. Propaganda, Pendulum Mists and Meek Stone all help deal with aggro plans like mine and David's. Evolution Sage is nice with more lands to help boost Bal's walkers, but it's also an okay blocker. I mulligan once. My hand isn't brilliant, but it has some potential. Exotic Orchard and Forest should cover all my colors. Sea Dasher Octopus synergizes greatly with Ravenous Slime. Champion of Lambolt can get silly fast with Pipa. And Seedborn Muse, well, we just saw how good she is in this deck. Finally, Philippa also mulligan once. She is missing one color mana for the Baron, but if she finds it, she can get him out on turn 2. She has a lot of numbers this time around, even if she is missing some of the mana for them. Still, Bogin and Karn cover a bunch while disrupting the table and interacting. Argwell's Bloodfast can draw Philippa some cards while moving the Baron's counter just for 2 mana, and Colligan Storm's Fury can be either a blocker or get cast for his dash cost over and over to cover all numbers but the number 2. How will this game play out? The first turn cycle is the slowest we've ever had on our channel. David plays an untapped forest, Bal a tapped Hallow Fountain. I follow that with my untapped forest and Philippa with the Verdant Catacombs. No turn 1 shenanigans. 
David breaks the uneventfulness on his second turn. He plays a basic forest and casts a Sylvan Library, announcing his readiness to come ahead this time around. He passes to Baal. Baal plays a tapped watery grave committed to not losing life, especially considering all the creature hate he is saving in his hand. He lets me go to my turn. I play the wrong land but only realize this after I have cast Cream of the Crop. I go to my end step and Philippa cracks her fetch for a tap Blood Crypt. Everyone's really conservative with their life totals this match. Philippa plays Badlands. She now has both colors available, so she wastes no time in casting her Mana Crypt and following it up with a Baron Von Count, ready to count down for our ruin. She actually sleeps up and says she might have one of us gone soon, and we joke that we should stop playing cards so that Philippa has to decide who to kill based off of the board state alone. However, we're not going to give up. David draws an extra card with the Sylvan Library and plays a basic forest. He casts a Sylvan Tutor for a Seaborn Muse, looking to abuse his commander but also making himself a target. He shuffles the top card of his library, gets a Muse there instead, and passes to Baal. Baal plays a command tower and casts a Propaganda to defend himself from any potential aggro coming his way. He passes to me. On my turn, I play Exotic Orchard and cast Pipa, triggering the cream of the crop to try and smoothen my draws. Once that is resolved, I pass to Philippa, curious about her threat of killing one of us soon. Philippa wins her crypt roll. She plays a basic mountain and casts Argwell's Bloodfast, moving the Doom Clock to 4. She attacks me and I roll with the punches for now. Philippa passes the turn, having her own counter advantage tool on the table. David loses far more life to the library, hurting himself more this game than we ever could. He then plays a basic forest and considers casting Timmy. However, without having an immediate way to activate his ability, David instead plays a slow game and casts a Wood Elves, getting himself an untapped forest for his troubles. He passes to Baal. Baal plays a City of Brass. He then casts an Arena Rector. He has the Pendrel Mists at hand, meaning he could potentially cheat in any walker from his library two turns from now, which is nothing to laugh at. He passes to me, and I immediately ruin Baal's plan. I cast Ravenous Slime, triggering Cream of the Crop without actually getting anything out of it and making Bal annoyed in the process. I move to my end step and Philippa activates her enchantment to draw a card. It's Philippa's turn and we're all wondering if someone is about to die. She wins a second crit roll in a row. She plays another basic mountain and gets to Counten, concluding that she's missing a bit of mana to get the one shot she desires. Thus, Philippa simply goes ahead and casts Ugin the Ineffable. This moves the Doom Clock to 3. Philippa exiles the top card of her library and creates a 2-2 Spirit Token with Ugin. She then attacks David with her Baron to pressure David's life total for the library. David jump blocks and the Elves get exiled due to my slime. Finally, Philippa passes to David. Guessing at a grindy match, David decides not to take damage from his library this turn. He knows there's an Ugin on the battlefield, but he sends his Muse out anyway partially since he has other stuff he wishes to protect and this could also make Philippa decide not to take him as a threat if she can just use Ugin to kill the Muse. David passes to Baal. Baal plays an Arid Mesa and follows that up with a Pendrel Mists, making me groan since I'm already so behind. He passes to me, fully protected. On my turn, I let Pippa die and pay for the slime. It's my best bet to remain in the game right now. I attack David who can block my slime with his muse due to the slime's passive ability and, before damage, mutate the Sea Dasher Octopus onto it. The damage resolves and I draw a card. I manage to find a Flooded Grove and move to my end step. David uses this opportunity to hardcast a Force of Vigor, afraid of Philippa's one-shot potential. He takes out a Mana Crypt and Baal's Propaganda so that we're able to pressure his Planeswalkers and life total. On her upkeep, Philippa pays to keep the Baron to the Mists and loses her token, putting the card under it into her hand. She plays a basic Swamp. Then, she casts a Goldraz Assassin, moving the Doom counter to 2. She follows that up with a discounted Karn, the Great Creator, moving the counter to 1. At this point, we're pretty sure someone is about to be blown up. Philippa confirms this when she casts a free Sensei's Divining Top. At this point, Philippa has to decide who dies. If she kills me, Baal can get any walker he wants on his next upkeep. If she kills Baal, the mists will no longer annoy her and she won't have to worry about his planeswalker army. If she kills David, she loses aggro potential for Baal's walkers. Also, she killed David last game and feels she might be able to keep him under tabs. And thus, Philippa chooses to kill Baal. The Baron triggers, destroying the planeswalker player on turn 5. 
She then uses Ugin to destroy the Muse, which gets exiled to my Ravenous Slime. She upticks her Karn without any actual target and passes to David. David once again chooses to draw a single card. He does not like the fact that Philippa's Vampire can instantly deal with his commander, so he needs to further ramp himself if he wants to be able to use Timmy at instant speed, and on the same turn he gets cast. David casts a fierce empath, shuffling the top of his library and getting a Cogla as a way to deal with the vampire or something else that comes his way. He follows that up with a destiny spinner, making his Cogla uncounterable just in case I have something up my sleeve. With that, David passes. I start my turn by playing a basic forest. I decide to do the responsible thing and attack the Ugin, forcing Philippa to choose between her commander or the planeswalker. She activates the divining top to check her options and decides that Ugin can go. This is good because I also have interaction for the Baron that only Ugin can get rid of in those colors. On my second main phase, I go ahead and cast Seedborn Muse, mostly as a bait for removal since I can currently abuse her. Cream of the crop triggers. Then I end my turn. Philippa untaps and plays Omort Path, challenging me to Gilda Drake her commander. She upticks Karn, not animating any artifact on the battlefield. Then, because she has instant speed draw and top manipulation, Philippa passes to David, plotting to one-shot someone soon. David draws one card and plays the basic forest he's been looking for. He casts Kogla and sends the trigger to the stack. He asks Philippa how many cards she has in her hand before choosing to target the Baron. Philippa responds to that. She activates the top, drawing the first card on her library and casts a Curtain's Call, destroying both Kogla and my Muse in response to the trigger. The Doom counter moves to 4. Kogla gets exiled and my Ooze Octopus gets another counter. David passes to me. I play a Hinterland Arbor. Then, I attack David to draw a card and cast a Vigor, which seems like a good way to block David's huge monsters indefinitely. Cream of the Crop triggers for 6, which is pretty nice. With that, we go to my end step and Philippa activates her enchantment to draw the top back to her hand. Philippa starts her turn by casting a Maze Mind Tome, moving the Doom counter to 3. She scries to the top with the Tome, checking if she has a spell with the number 2 on it. Philippa seems to be lacking mana to one-shot someone this turn, so she activates Karn and passes to David, once again able to draw cards as needed. We know that someone might be about to die next turn. David once again chooses to only draw one card since I've been aiming some aggro at him. He plays another basic forest and now he's only one land away from being able to cast Timmy and flash in some obscenity. He casts a Hydro Omnivore to try and demotivate my attacks before passing to me. I begin my turn by casting Song of the Dryads on Baron Von Count to spare Philippa the hard choice of deciding which player gets one shot on her next turn. I then go to combat attacking the vid. If he blocks, my creature will grow bigger. If he doesn't, I draw a card. Sounds like a win-win to me. The vid chooses to take the damage, so I draw one. On my second main phase, I cast an Earthcraft followed by a Jaraga Tree Speaker. Then I pass the turn to Philippa. On my end step, she draws two cards with the Blood Fast. Philippa decides now is a good time to cast Damnation. I agree to the point that I choose to cast Pact of Negation on it because I enjoy my board right now and the vids does not intimidate me. The Damnation gets countered. Philippa then casts Diabolic Intent, sacrificing her Goldraz Assassin. We think a bit and conclude she's going for a Bala Citadel since she has Divining Top. However, Philippa is aware she does not have a lot of life under her belt, especially if she decides to go that path. Instead, she picks up an Underworld Breach. Note that at this point, we did forget the ooze triggers and that it would have exiled the assassin. Still, we wanted to show you this game's outcome. This mistake did also not heavily affect the game's outcome. Philippa transforms her Maze Mind Tomb into a creature with Karn. This way, she doesn't have to risk our aggro for a next turn to work out in her favor. Philippa passes, not casting the top, just in case there's a way for her to get that Ugin out of her graveyard to destroy my Song of the Dryads and maybe one-shot someone. David finds his 8th land and casts Timmy. He considers flashing in a Crater Roof Behemoth, but he does not have lethal for any of us. Considering he also has a Blightsteel Colossus at the ready, he instead passes to me, not wanting to attack Philippa for nothing. On my turn, I pay for the Pact. I attack Philippa with both my Sea Dasher Octopus and Vigor, considering she probably has Bala Citadel in her hand. She blocks Vigor with the Tome. We once again forget the Uzo's effect. Philippa scries to the bottom before damage and then takes 9 to her life total. I draw a card and pass the turn. 
Our guest gets to playing and surprises us with an underworld breach. She exiles three cards to cast Damnation, just in case if he tries to flash something in like a Bane of Progress in response to her going for another card, namely Mana Crypt. David does flash something, a Blightsteel Colossus. Our mouths drop when we realize what this means. The rest of the creatures on my opponent's board get destroyed by the Damnation and exiled by the Uzas effect. Hey, we remember this time. Philippa then exiles three more cards to cast Mana Crypt for free. She uses it to cast Sensei's Divining Top and look at the top three cards on her library. She then casts Zolaport Enforcer and uses Karn to transform her top into a 1-1 creature so that she has enough toughness on the table to survive a Blightsteel Colossus attack before passing. We go to David's turn and he only draws one card. Now, David could choose to cast the Crater of Behemoth and one-shot Philippa or just killing me and giving the Baron back to our guest. Considering she only has 3 cards in her hand, David decides to take me out, mostly because he's afraid of my interaction, namely bounce spells. I get murdered by Infect. On his second main phase, David casts an Eternal Witness getting back his Force of Vigor. He uses it to destroy the Divining Top and the Blood Fast, to try and take card advantage from her and reduce the odds of getting one shot. It's now Philippa's turn and we're all holding our breath. She wins the Crypt Roll and reads her board a bit. Philippa evokes Shriekmaw, triggering the Baron and destroying Eternal Witness in the process. The Doom Count moves to 2. David says he's starting to regret not killing the Crypt, but Philippa tells him she doesn't even need it. She then uses the Karn's minus 2 and gets the Maze Mind Tome from Exile. Philippa casts a Chandra Torch of Defiance. The Doom Counter moves to 1. She uses Chandra's ability to produce 2 red mana. We all hold our breath as she casts the Maze Mind Tome, moving the Doom Counter back to 5 and destroying David with the Baron's trigger. Philippa wins the match and joins our victorious guests roster. Thanks for following us through this match, everyone. The Doom Clock took out two players and this entire match. We'd like to start the credits by thanking our current patrons and especially Izanagi, Stefan, TJ Rapp, Mike Purr, Ajimo, and Eagle Eagle, our stack breakers. If you want to support us, you can do so by liking this video or becoming a patron yourself. We'd also like to thank our LGS for sponsoring us with a really cool Watchtower 100 to give away to one of our patrons once August starts. Become a pledge to enter. If you want to go through other Commander adventures, click one of the videos on the right. If you want to talk with us about our games or other EDH-related matters, join us on Discord. Come with us again next week for a new set of Commanders and more decisive plays. See you all then.